Hi, my name is Faith Boyson and I'm a nursing student at Hack. Today I'm going to um, explain some different um, measures of oxygen therapy. So, here I go. Hi, my name is Faith Boyson and I'm a nursing student from Hack. I'm washing my hands. Could you please tell me your name and date of birth? Um, Okay. I'm going to pull the privacy curtain here, and um, today I'm going to get your pulse ox level, and I'm going to demonstrate the use of the nasal cannula, and the oxygen face mask, and the non-rebreather mask, and, if, and the <laughs> uh, incentive spirometer, spirometer device as well. So, that's what I'm going to do. Do you have any allergies? Okay. Well, first of all, if I have someone who has oxygen issues, the assessment that I would do, I would look at their nail beds for anxiosis. I would look at their the nail shape for clubbing. I would look uh, at their general skin color for cyanosis. I would look at their oral mucosa to, uh, for cyanosis. Um, I would observe how they're breathing. I would observe the the uh, how labored their breathing is, the depth, the rate, the shallowness of it. Um, I would observe their vital signs. Um, they would typically be elevated, and um, I would also oscillate the lungs and listen for any crackles or ronchi or wheezes or anything like that. I might percuss on the uh, over the lungs too determine uh, fluid. So I would I also might see the patient anxious, might see her um, tripoding, leaning forward in bed, um, struggling to get breaths, coughing, stuff like that. That's what I would typically see in <coughs> someone who has oxygen issues. So um, I'm going to get a pulse ox. I have a little pulse oximeter right here. So I would typically use it on the patient's finger. So can you please hold it with your finger? Okay. I'd wait to see what it says. Okay, and it says her oxygen levels are 96 and her pulse is 67. And that's within the normal range. 95 to 100 is normal range. And um, yeah, that's the normal range. Anything less than 95 indicates there is not, there's not a good level of oxygen perfusion in the body. So the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is the correct use of nasal cannula oxygen therapy. So first of all, I'm going to make sure that my, na that my uh, tubing is connected to the oxygen device. I'm going to make sure that it's set at the correct uh, level according to what the, what the doctor has prescribed, which for nasal cannula, it's usually um, between one to six liters per minute, and it delivers an FiO2 of um, 24 to 40%. And I would make in this oxygen cannula is typically used for chronic situations, not as much for acute situations, but for time the patient needs oxygen for a longer period of time. And the cannula, I will make sure that when I put it in um, to my patient's nose, it's following the curvature of the nose, not going backwards up against her, um, up against the side of the nose. So uh, first, I'm going to test it and make sure the oxygen's coming out on my, uh, against my wrist, and it is. So then I'm going to carefully place it underneath my patient's nose, behind the ears, and I'm going to, there's a little piece here that brings it close to the chin. I'm gonna be careful not to zip, not to zip my uh, patient's chin. And then I would use some um, foam pieces or to, to prevent skin breakdown in any area where the oxygen tubing is rubbing against the skin. Okay, so that's the 
So that's the nasal cannula. Next I'm going to demonstrate the proper use of the oxygen face mask. So the oxygen face mask is used in more acute situations where higher levels of oxygen are needed. Um, first I'll make sure that my face, the oxygen tubing is connected to the uh, oxygen device appropriately. Uh, make sure it's set at the correct level according to the, what the pr provider has ordered. So for a face mask, mask, the typical levels are from 5 to 8 liters per minute with an oxygen concentration of uh, 40 to 60 percent. So I make sure that there's oxygen coming out of the, of the mask and I would apply it to my patient. Typically the masks have a strap that reaches all the way around, but for the sake of this I'm just going to do like this. So I make sure it's fitted above the nose and under the chin so that the patient's getting um, good oxygen. And I'm going to ask them if it feels comfortable and make sure it uh, feels okay. And of course anytime I put on oxygen I'll come and reassess to make sure it's working good. All right, and the last one I'm going to demonstrate is the um, is the non-rebreather mask. So in a non-rebreather mask, there is this bag that is um, that is inflated with oxygen, and it has a valve that when the patient breathes in, that pure oxygen goes right into their lungs, and when the patient breathes <coughs> out, that valve where that let them breathe in closes and the valves on the side of the mass open and let the carbon dioxide escape. So it's very important to have the bag inflated, otherwise there's no air for the patient to breathe in when she breathes in and she can suffocate. It's also important that the valves work correctly on the mask. So all the valves should be working correctly so that there's, uh, the patient can release carbon dioxide and that she, so that she can get oxygen. So I would connect my um, oxygen, I would fill the bag uh, with oxygen from my oxygen source and connected to my oxygen source and I would set it according to the rate that my, the provider has ordered. Typically for non-rebreather masks the rate is uh, 15 um, the rate is 15 um, 15 liters per minute at 80 to 95 percent oxygen concentration FiO2. So I would connect it to my, I would apply it to my patient and I would always make sure anytime I'm doing any kind of oxygen therapy, I already have set my patient in the high fowler's position, but anytime that a patient is having trouble breathing, I would immediately bring them to the high fowler's position and just a note, that's what I meant to um, say that the patient needs to be sit, sit up straight, so for the, um, at the beginning of the video. I meant to note that, but I'm noting it now. Um, she needs to be in the high fowler's position for every uh, each one of these. Um, that's just that's a good position to help uh, maximal breathing occur. So I'm going to help my patient put the non-rebreather mask on. I'm going to ensure all the valves are working correctly. The bag is inflated, and I'm going to make sure there's a good seal around her nose and mouth, and it's uh, there's no there's no areas of friction. I might need to use some padding or something if there's areas of friction to prevent skin breakdown. Um, but that's so I would set it so she can get a good high concentration of oxygen. So that's the non-rebreather mask. Now the last thing I want to de demonstrate is the oxygen um, incentive spirometer. I have this little, I have a Kleenex box and a little tube here. So this will have to work. So with the, the purpose of the uh, spirometer, the incentive spirometer is to keep the lungs from collapsing or to keep atelectasis uh, from happening. Um, because if the lungs aren't exercised, if they don't get any exercise, yeah, if they don't get exercise, they can, um, patients can get, um, their lungs can get kind of lazy and they can just, um, accumulate fluid and not want to breathe and but it's very important for them to um, keep inflating their lungs so when they get better they have good lung volume and they're able to get get out and do some exercise and stuff. So the incentive spirometer is meant to be used typically 10 times an hour usually the um, the volume um, is set at a prescribed rate for w weight and sex and age. 
So I would set the volume um, that she's trying to reach at the prescribed volume for her weight and her sex and her age. And then I would, there's a little bowel there that rises as she breathes. I would tell her to breathe in slowly and deeply. And uh, first let the air out of your lungs, then uh, close your mouth around this. And we're, I was going to hold this level and she's going to be in a, a high followers position. And she's going to take a deep breath in, slowly and deeply. And then hold it there for two to six seconds. Okay, now you can breathe out. <coughs> now you can cough. Yep. <coughs> yep. So that's how you use the incentive spirometer, and it's typically used several times an hour to try to encourage lung expansion and um, all that. So that's how you use the spirometer. And after all this, I will wash my hands. I will make sure that my patient is comfortable. I will make sure that she has her call bell within reach. I will make sure that the bed is lowered to the floor. And I will be back to check on her in a little while. And she can call me whenever she needs me. So that's the end of my oxygen video. <laughs>